Hi, my name's Jose. I'm a technician here at Clipper Creek, and I'm here to talk about a, a few different conditions uh, of our charging stations. One of the first things I would do uh, as an individual is uh, do a routine inspection of the, of the uh, unit I'm using. Uh, look at the cable, make sure there's no cuts, abrasions, uh, frays. Um, look at the nozzle, make sure there's no uh, debris, any type of dirt, bugs, anything like that that get in the way. Um, it's also a good time to see if there's anything there that is broken. Uh, if you see any of those conditions, uh, do not use the station. Uh, go ahead and give us a call. At that point, we can replace it. Um, one of the things I would suggest uh, is to have periodic inspections of the unit as well, uh, not just when you're going to connect it, but if somebody in facilities maybe once a week uh, come out, do a visual inspection. Uh, some units don't get used all the time. Uh, it's a good time to inspect them at that point. One of the first conditions uh, you should watch for is a broken tab. Uh, if you look at the front of the nozzle here, the tab is missing. Uh, without it, the uh, nozzle does not lock in place, so it can be pulled uh, relatively easily out of the inlet. Uh, there are a lot of times you may think it's charging, it may not be in all the way or locked in place, and it won't charge. Um, one of the things with uh, the broken tab is that it could start to damage your vehicle without you being aware of it. Um, you pull the nozzle out. If it's in the middle of a charge, uh, you could cause arcing on the pins. Uh, that's what this little button is for, and that's what um, it's used for to release that tab from your inlet. One of the conditions that happens when you pull this out with the broken tab is that uh, it can cause arcing. Um, you can bypass that by pressing on the button prior to pulling the nozzle out of the inlet. Uh, a lot of times, um, users don't do that. Um, that's why if the tab is broken, it's usually the best idea to uh, give us a call so we can, we can replace it. Another condition that we find is that the button here will actually get stuck in a down position. Uh, if you notice, I can push down on it. The button does not bounce back up. Um, when that happens, the vehicle is not being charged. Uh, there's a button here that actually sends a signal to the car, tells the car to stop uh, current from flowing. Um, and you'll have very unhappy users when you do this. Uh, you can push forward on the button. Most of the time it will pop back up, allowing you to charge. But uh, what happens is that the lever inside here breaks and sometimes you may not be able to release the nozzle. Um, if you push the button down, uh, the front end of the, the tab does not lift, and you may have some difficulty with that. So if you see that, uh, don't use it. Uh, I mean, if you happen to use it, uh, you can actually buy this bias forward on this button and then push down on it to try to, to make the tab come up and release the nozzle from your vehicle. Um, at that point, please call us so we can replace the, the unit. Another condition is the, uh, the towers inside the nozzle being broken. If you uh, look at this one, you see that uh, uh, the plastic has broken off. Um, not a good idea uh, to use the nozzle in this condition. Uh, definitely give us a call so that we replace it. Uh, a lot of times uh, that can be caused by the nozzle being dropped. Uh, could be uh, maybe not inserted properly. Uh, possibly even heat related uh, or the plastic becomes brittle and it breaks off. Um, so yeah, give us a call and, and we'll replace it for you. A fourth condition that you'll see is a melted tower. Uh, looking at the nozzle here, you should see one of the towers melted uh, due to heat. Um, highly recommend not to use it at this, in this condition, uh, strictly because it could damage the vehicle, can make the nozzle even worse, or it could actually have the nozzle stick to the inlet of your vehicle and then you wouldn't be able to pry it off uh, unless you broke something. So definitely give us a call uh, if you see a nozzle in this condition so that we can replace it. There are several lights uh, indicators in the front of the unit as you can tell here. Uh, we do have a power light which is amber, we have a charging light which turns green, and then the two bottom lights will turn red when there's a fault condition. Uh, depending on the condition, uh, the lights will either stay on solid They'll blink once or the two bottom lines will blink together at a sequence of anywhere between two to five times. Um, if you do encounter a fault condition, uh, I would suggest that you take them or make a note of how many times they do blink between pauses. Uh, there is a sequence, they'll blink the code, they'll pause for about two seconds, they'll blink again and then repeat itself over and over again. 
Um, you can reset the fault condition either by turning the breaker off, turning it back on. The uh, majority of the time they will reset, allowing you to use the charger. Um, it does have a, uh, a built-in reclosure timer, uh, meaning that after about 17 minutes, it will try to resense that fault condition. If it does not find it or sense it, um, it will reset itself and continue uh, what it was doing prior to the, the fault condition. So if the car needed to be charged, it will continue charging. We also have a CP50, it, it basically is a tester for EVSEs. Um, it simulates an electric vehicle uh, connected to your charging station so that you don't need to have an actual car here. Um, you can connect it to the nozzle. You can then uh, do a charge request, not no request. Uh, you can connect the scope to it, take some measurements or a voltmeter for voltage measurements. Uh, you also have a, a CCID trip here that you can enable and it will then put the unit in a fault condition. Um, if you need any more information on this, please contact us at uh, Clipper Creek. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.